happy new year everybody and uh, hope you had a, a good passing from 2013 to 2014 and the time does not stop for us but uh, we can always go through new days and with new experiences in life that's a good part about life and today I want to talk a few minutes about uh, tetanus basically tetanus immunization and when we think about tetanus many things come into your mind non immunized or partially immunized a person with a history of wound developing trismus and uh, the neck pain hyper uh, irritability and hyper reflux yeah all those things and I want to deal with the most important things today for your consideration tetanus is caused by clostridium tetany an anaerobic gram positive bacillus that produces a potent neurotoxin and it happens in a partially immunized or incompletely immunized people uh, with a wound soiled by uh, clostridium bacteria the toxin is released by cns retrograde axon transport it is bound to cerebral ganglioides and appears increase the excitability in the neurons and the spinal cord basically the inhibitory synapses are depressed and hyper excitability starts and that is what causes the problem in many cases there is no history of wound infection that's interesting you see another problem here is uh, people who are developing like a uh, drug use drug abuse and in developed nations today from Afghanistan to the United States drug abuse is on rise people using intravenous drugs they are at particularly at risk for this problem and also the newborns in underdeveloped countries infection uh, it, it can happen from the contamination of the umbilical cord so the incubation period is 4 to 14 days that's an important fact to remember but it could be longer but usually the incubation period is 4 to 14 days and in the children and uh, it's very important to ask about immunization status and 85 percent 85 percent of cases occur in adults older than 25 years Groups that uh, oppose vaccinations are at particularly risk. You have Amish, Mennonite, Jehovah's Witnesses. These religious groups are at particular risk because they deny vaccination. And uh, that's an important fact to remember because don't just uh, take it for granted because this guy uh, is from America, so he must have been immunized. Need not be. And if he, is, if he belongs to a particular religious group, ask them. That's why the sociological context of a person is very, very important when you consider a disease. The other point is, did you receive the three doses or not? And many people think that, uh, uh, they ask, did you get a tetanus uh, immunization? Yes, but people who, th who got even one dose think that they are immune. You need to ask them, did you get the three doses? Then only can you be confident that this person is completely immune. The other thing is people with HIV. People with HIV may not be adequately immunized. So don't go by, you got tetanus the last 10 years, so you're immune. It doesn't work like that. You always need to think about the type of the wound is it a clean wound or contaminated wound now let us talk about the wound care tetanus prone wounds the wound care is very very important wounds that are contaminated with soil debris feces or saliva are at an increased risk for tetanus puncture wounds are wounds that uh, contain Devitalized tissue are at increased risk for uh, infection with Clostridium uh, tetany 
and they can happen from crush injuries, frostbite, burns, avulsion. All wounds should be adequately cleaned. Foreign material should be removed and debrided and necrotic or devitalized tissue or residual foreign matter needs to be removed. Then the decision to tetanus, use the tetanus toxide vaccine. So you say that the type of the wound is the important thing. Then the, for the type of injury, then the immunization status. What is the immunization status of this particular patient? TIG should be used in people with less than three doses. Why? Because they are not adequately immunized. So tetanus immune globulin, basically you are giving them passive immunity into their body because if you give the vaccine, it takes time for them to form the antibodies. So you, uh, so the tetanus-prone wounds should be um, um, importantly dealt with. And let me put it in a good uh, uh, context here. For example, if a HIV patient comes, we need to think about his immunization status. Does this guy has enough antibodies? If you are in doubt, give tetanus immune globulin. The prophylaxis dose is 250 units, regardless of the age. If tetanus immunization is incomplete, a dosage of uh, the appropriate uh, vaccine should be given. So tetanus immune globulin, that's something you need to remember for immune uh, immunodeficient patients. And uh, if TIG is not available, what should you do? Then the second thing is intravenous immune globulin. If TIG is not available, go for intravenous immune globulin. Now, if somebody gets uh, uh, that problem, that uh, this, God forbid, if they develop actual disease of tetanus, what should you do? You should give them 3,000 to 6,000 units of uh, tetanus immune globulin. You should infiltrate that uh, wound with the tetanus immune globulin. And uh, if tetanus immune globulin is not available, then intravenous immune globulin dose of 200. I mean, I don't remember uh, the dosage, but uh, you can refer that. But the point is tetanus immune globulin, then intravenous immune globulin. If it's not available, equine tetanus antitoxin. You should surgically debride the wounds. So you see the treatment is like very, very uh, important because it could have deadly consequences. The other thing is uh, when the vegetative forms of the bacteria enter the bloodstream, you can think of uh, some antibiotics. And the antibiotic in this case is metronidazole for 10 days. And how do you actually treat the patient? Remember three things, ABC, airway breathing circulation. Make sure this person is adequately breathing. And the spasms develop. I mean, I saw one patient with complete muscle spasms. He can't even open his mouth. So we had to give him benzodiazepines and to put an esogastric tube and a feeding tube. So what did we do basically? We are making sure those ABCs are answered, airway breathing circulation are properly taken care of. So to sum up this evening, tetanus caused by Clostridium tetanae and when you are thinking about a person with a wound, see for the type of injury, is it a clean wound or an unclean wound? If it is a clean wound, uh, the immune status, like for example, if, if the patient had a tetanus uh, vaccine in the last 10 years, he is good. But if the patient has an unclean wound, a contaminated wound, then it should be in the last five years. 
if the patient did not have tetanus in the last five years, then you should give them the, uh, that uh, uh, tetanus booster. And uh, when in, in certain cases like incompletely immunized people, people who did not have three doses in the past, or people who have uh, HIV, basically they did not have antibodies in good supply at the time of infection. So just the common sense, you have to give them immediate antibodies. You need to put antibodies in their bodies to fight with those pathogens. That's why you're giving tetanus immunoglobulin to these patients. So you say, it's if, you, if you think logically, it's very easy to remember these facts. So if a person goes into tetanus, actual tetanus disease, what would you do? Again, use common sense. This person needs antibodies. Are you going to give a vaccine? It's not that useful. It's not useful actually. Why? Because it takes time to form the antibodies and the patient would be dead and would be in mortuary if you just give vaccine. So you need to put antibodies immediately. That's why you give a tet uh, tetanus immune globulin. 3,000 to 6,000 units. And if tetanus immune globulin is not available, what would you do? You go for the second best, intravenous immune globulin. If that's not available, you give equine tetanus antitoxin. If that's not available, you give antibiotics with quick action against the vegetative forms of this disease. So, if that's not even available and the patient actually developed uh, muscle spasms, hyperexcitability, hyperreflections, you need to think about ABCs before help arrives. ABCs, airway breathing circulation. So I hope these uh, points will help you and uh, please feel free to put uh, any important points you can think of in our comment section and uh, have a good night. Thank you.